Hey, you folks. Chris Van Deviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. And today I want to share with you a concept and mix strategy of saturation to glue your mixes together. So with all that said, before we go any further, got to take a couple steps back. What is saturation? Saturation equals distortion. It's as simple as that. But when we think of the word distortion, we think of aggressive electric guitars, blown out speakers, a kick drum like punching through a blown out speaker. There's a very aggressive connotation to it, where saturation is the opposite of that. It's a very warm, fuzzy word, makes us feel good, and it's the subtle version of distortion. A sound that is imparted onto your whole mix or tracks that makes it sound more warm, pleasing to the ear, a lot of nebulous terms that's kind of hard to define by just saying it, but when you hear it, you're like, oh yeah, that sounds good. I like that. So the toolkit within Logic, we've had several options for saturating our tracks and mixes. And in fact, I did a video for the website Logic Pro Expert that walked you through the idea of using the Logic Compressor to emulate an analog workflow. But our toolkit has grown tremendously since the update of 10.4. I mean, it's fantastic, the options we have now. So I wanna walk you through some of those options. I'm gonna bring up the mixer here. And the first thing we need to talk about is the new Vintage EQ collection with the console EQ, the graphic EQ, and the tube EQ. And what's brilliant about these plugins is that they emulate a piece of hardware. This, In this case, the console EQ emulates a Neve EQ. And much like the hardware that it emulates, if you press your track harder and harder, like if you jack up the volume of your track going into this emulation, it's going to hit the ceiling of this particular piece of kit and it's going to start to distort and it's going to start to saturate and oftentimes in a very pleasing way. But instead of jacking up your gain before this and then having to throw another gain plug in to bring it back down, we have the output section here which is a really handy way of driving up the saturation without driving up the volume too much to do that. So I have a mix here and I wanna show you how this saturates. And it's not always obvious. It's not always like, oh, okay, the top end has changed dramatically. It's very subtle, but you'll hear that it'll glue this mix together in a pleasing way. And you'll hear a little bit of a tonal shift, but let me show you. So I'm gonna show you this mix without the console EQ, and then I'm going to bring it in. Okay, so you've heard a little bit of the bloom. I'm gonna play it back again now, now that I've driven the drive all the way up. Just gonna bypass and reinstantiate the console EQ for you to hear. To my ears, there's a little bit of a lift in the top end that I like, and then the dynamics are a little tighter, so the kick and the snare feel a little fatter, everything gels a little more. And this is like a pro mix secret. Even if you don't use the EQ or the compression on a unit, but you just drive the signal through it, you can do some cool things and impart some awesome tonal qualities. Of course, it's important to adjust the output volume so you're not just being tricked by the signal getting louder, because drive does drive up the volume a little bit. What's even cooler about the Vintage EQ collection is this output model mode 
So you can pick between the three different EQ outputs without actually changing the EQ that you're using. So say you dial in the EQ here and you're really digging what it's doing, but you would like to try out some different output modes for driving the signal and gluing your mixes together. You have the option of switching to the graphic EQ or the tube EQ output mode. So I'm placing this on my stereo output or submix. So I'm driving the whole mix into this EQ to saturate and glue it together. So let me show you now with the graphic EQ, which is our API emulation. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna bring this down to zero and then I'm gonna start to drive the signal up. So let's hear it. Okay, again, the signal of the track, the dynamics start to squash. The kick sounds a little pattier than I originally had it. And it imparts a little more punchiness. I don't know if I love this API for this particular instance, but it's a great tool for you know certain mixes that need that sort of tonal quality. All right, so now let's dig into the Logic Compressor. And I've already written a post about this, but I think an underused feature of the Logic Compressor is the distortion mode here. And it's fantastic. I always leave it on soft for the most part. And when you have the distortion here set to off, the compressor isn't adding any sort of tonal quality. But when you switch it to soft, hard, or clip, then it starts to give a harmonic saturation to your tracks. And you can drive into it with the makeup gain. Just make sure to bring the output gain down so you're not blowing yourself away. So let's use something like the classic VCA and let's hear. I'm gonna start out with this thing off and then bring it in. So I'm very fond of the distortion section on the Logic Compressor. I like the classic VCA in this case. It seems to add a low girth that I like. And I drove into it and brought the output gain down to try not to be tricked by the boost in volume. So this is another tool in your kit. And there's six or seven emulations, three different distortion modes. It's awesome. So again, this is all on my stereo output. Now I'm gonna introduce the tape delay and, you know, many third-party companies have sold us on you need, like, that tape sound or that console sound. And it's amazing how Logic has already had some of these tools available to you and I right out of the gate. So in this particular case, the tape delay emulates a tape sound. And what's important if you're going to use this plugin in this way is you want to bring the feedback all the way down to zero, the delay all the way down to zero. So you remove the tempo sync. You don't want any sort of delay feature going on. We just want the tonal quality of this plugin. So I brought the dry all the way down in the wet to about 70%. Let's hear it before and after. So to my ears, it's very clear that this skews lower down the spectrum. The top end kind of gets chopped off. 
in this particular case, I wouldn't throw this on the submix, but if I had a particularly sizzly track, maybe an electric guitar that had way too much treble on it, something that's super aggressive, maybe, I don't know, like a tambourine or something, something that's just so in your face, like, oh, this is too much. I would throw the tape delay emulation on there to smooth it out, to kind of take off the top end and make it warmer. And if you bring down the clip threshold, you can further distort the signal against this emulation. What's so cool about this emulation that I'm really digging on is how the kick sort of like hits against the ceiling of the tape delay and it sort of blows out a little bit. I wouldn't use it on the whole mix, but I like that quality. It's pretty sweet. So then finally, I want to introduce to you the Fat FX, which this plugin is incredible if just for the distortion block here. So now we've got a whole slew of emulations for saturating and distorting our signals. And, you know, you just dial this in like 5 or 10% and you can really add a nice bloom to your tracks. I'm trying to find a place where I can crack the words wide open. Forget about the way. That's amazing to me. I love that plugin. I love the emulations on that plugin. So to wrap this all up, all these terms that people like to throw around when it comes to mixing clarity and depth and warmth and saturation and all these things that are very nebulous, that don't give you a lot to work with, but make you feel kind of bad about the tools that you don't have, you have them. They, they exist and they're being built, they're being expanded upon between the vintage EQ collection, the already existing distortions like overdrive, the fat effects, the tape delay, the compressor, you have so many tools at your disposal to add vibe, to add saturation, to glue your mixes together. And you don't have to just use them on the submix. I often will put them on the individual track stacks of my instruments and gel them together that way. I'm a huge fan of these plugins. The more plugins that Logic introduces, the Kind of the dumb, the dumber I feel for spending money, spending the hundreds of dollars I have on third-party plugins. So if that was helpful to you, please subscribe to the YouTube channel or subscribe on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting material. Every week my goal is just to add value to your logic life and help you get the best you can out of it. Thank you so much.